Hello everyone, and welcome to the Ancient Discovery Channel. My English isn't great, so I'm using AI voiceover to help me out, and I hope you can understand. I'll be bringing you fascinating facts about prehistoric creatures, so, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to my channel. In our previous video about the Anomalocaris, many of you commented, Wow, this Anomalocaris looks so strange. Well, to those friends, I must say, you're still too young and too simple. When it comes to strange creatures, how can we not mention the most bizarre looking and uniquely evolved group on our planet Echinoderms? Echinoderms? What kind of animals are they? Let's start with the most familiar example of Echinoderms, the starfish. You see, most freely moving animals have bilateral symmetry but starfish take a different approach and develop into a five-pointed star shape. This design is truly baffling when you think about it. But that's not the only peculiar aspect of starfish. Take heating, for instance, the normal process would be to eat food through the mouth and then swallow it into the stomach, right? But starfish manage to put a unique spin on even this most basic function. A significant number of starfish eat, by first regurgitating their stomachs, digesting the food outside their bodies, and then packing it up and placing it back inside their bellies. Now tell me, are you impressed or not? If you're not, don't worry. Starfish will always be able to satisfy your curiosity for the bizarre. For example, their unique growth and development pattern is absolutely unparalleled in the animal kingdom. First, let's take a look at this little guy, the larva of a starfish. It looks nothing like an adult starfish, but that's not too surprising as there are many similar examples in nature. However, when this larva reaches a certain stage, it not only grows numerous tentacles, but also develops a five-pointed star-like structure on one side of its body. Eventually, the starfish larva settles to the ocean floor, and the five-pointed star detaches. That's right, this five-pointed star is the actual adult starfish. In other words, for starfish, it's not that the younger version of you grows into the adult version of you, but rather, the adult version of you grows out of the younger version. That's so cool that it's practically friendless. In our era, there are four other types of animals that also belong to the echinoderm group, along with starfish. These are sea cucumbers, sea urchins, brittle stars, and crinodes. In short, if you see an animal with a name that starts with sea followed by a word that has nothing to do with the ocean, there's a good chance it's an echinoderm. We know that scientists classify certain animals into a large group, because they share some common features. However, this commonality among echinoderms is not apparent in their outward appearances. Starfish look like stars, sea urchins are spiky balls, sea cucumbers are called sea cucumbers by foreigners because they look like pickles, crinodes resemble flowers. And as for brittle stars, they look like severely underdeveloped starfish. All right. Forget what I said. Yes, starfish might not necessarily look like stars, and sure, sea urchins can also take on a coin-like shape. Fine, the point is, the appearances of echinoderms are incredibly diverse and unpredictable. I've always wondered, if animals like starfish and sea urchins had gone extinct like dinosaurs throughout history. What would today's paleontologists make of the vast ray of star shape and spiky ball fossils? It's hard to imagine the bizarre and monstrous creatures they might reconstruct from such evidence. Speaking of bizarre and monstrous creatures, I'm reminded of the ancient echinoderms that looked like a parade of ghosts and goblins. Let me give you a few examples to help you get a feel for them. If we think of evolution, as a process of natural selection, where only the fittest survive. 
It's hard to say what kind of intelligence contests the echinoderms were engaged in. Generally, early echinoderm ancestors evolved into a sessile, filter-feeding lifestyle on the ocean floor. While this may not seem particularly unusual, the sedentary filter-feeding lifestyle is typically stable. And the body structures required for it don't need to be overly complex. So, evolutionarily speaking, these creatures should appear relatively conservative. However, echinoderms are not ordinary animals. Their earliest ancestors might be traced back to creatures like this. Although their shapes are somewhat peculiar, their appearance is still somewhat acceptable. It's easy to tell which end is the mouth and which is the anus. Their bodies display bilateral symmetry. And while the unique little tail might seem out of place, it's still a meaningful structure. But then, the echinoderm's evolutionary course took an unexpected turn. Usually, when organs and structures are lost during an animal's evolution, they don't reappear. But echinoderms didn't care about these rules. For example, they first lost the little tail and tentacles around the mouth, turning into something resembling a hot water bottle lying on the ocean floor. Then, suddenly, they stood upright, and the tentacles around the mouth somehow re -evolve. Afterward, one of these tentacles extended into the ocean floor, and the tail returned. What kind of bizarre maneuver was this? Finally, this group of echinoderms gradually abandoned their original bilateral body shape, giving birth to crinoids. In addition to crinoids, there were several other echinoderms, such as blastodes, which also followed the path of fixed filter-feeding evolution. Although they experienced different body transformations, they eventually developed into small, flower-like forms. Between 200 million and over 400 million years ago, the oceans were filled with crinoids and blastodes, creating a vibrant and colorful underwater garden full of diverse and bizarre echinoderms. Some crinoids were straightforward in their approach to growth, aiming to become taller, larger, and sturdier to stand out in the underwater garden. Others adopted a more adventurous approach, no longer anchoring themselves to the seafloor but instead turning into vine-like structures, wrapping themselves around other objects, and easily relocating whenever necessary. Some crinoids were even more adaptable, attaching themselves to floating objects on the ocean surface, gaining a higher vantage point, and outcompeting other crinoids. Others went as far as becoming predators, capturing small fish and crustaceans that passed by and engulfing them like a sushi roll. Although these flamboyant and complex prehistoric crinodes have gone extinct, the crinodes that have survived to this day continue to display their unique and fascinating characteristics. For example, there is a type of crinone called dantidone that transforms into a mass of seagrass. You might think, so what, it's like a flower turning into a bunch of grass, but it's not that simple. This seagrass can walk. Crinodes have tendrils like roots that they can use to walk across the seabed. And some had even evolved into feather stars, which can swim. However, among echinoderms, these creatures that seem to come from another world are just the tip of the iceberg. There is another group of echinoderms that chose to abandon their fixed lifestyle from the beginning and start moving around, generally speaking. When an animal evolves to a free-moving lifestyle, it strengthens its body symmetry, grows legs and eyes, and develops muscles and nerves, among other things. But echinoderms don't follow these steps. The first step for echinoderms is to twist their bodies like a hornet. This animal in the picture is called the helicoplacoe, and it's unbelievable. It twists its body several times, 
But does it grow legs after that? No. The second step for echinoderms is to flatten themselves. Okay. Let's flatten them. But then, do they grow legs and muscles? No. The next step is to turn themselves upside down and use the small tendrils it once used to filter seawater to move around. That's how sea stars evolved. It's like humans degrading their hands and feet and then standing upside down and moving with their tongues. It's an evolutionary path that's hard to grasp, but that's how echinoderms evolved. But that's how echinoderms evolved, with an evolutionary path that's hard to understand. Despite this, they managed to create the most successful branch of echinoderms that still exists today. Including sea stars, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, and brittle stars. Among them, sea cucumbers are perhaps the most difficult to explain. Their ancestors were probably a group of animals that looked a bit like sea urchins. But for some reason, they stretch themselves out and lay flat. Then, all their plates and spines on their body disappear, and the sea cucumber was born. Regardless, this group of echinoderms evolved from a worn ancestor with symmetrical free movement on both sides into a fixed club. Then a pancake, then a pentagon, then a sphere, and finally, with the sea cucumber. Back to a worm with symmetrical free movement on both sides. What did billions of years of evolution achieve in the end? Maybe it was just a bold creative idea. Don't think that sea cucumbers have only one form. Their shape-shifting abilities fully embody the restless spirit of echinoderms. Sea cucumbers are incredibly diverse in form, as can be seen from their various common names, such as sea apples, sea pineapples, and even sea pigs. With so many different types of sea cucumbers, one could have a truly lavish feast. If you think that sea cucumbers are the bizarre pinnacle of echinoderm evolution, then you are mistaken. In my opinion, the most wild and unconventional echinoderm, in terms of four, is not the sea cucumber or crinoi. But the homolozoans, also known as the adrioasteros. These creatures are a type of echinoderm that seems to want to be a quiet filter feeder yet is unwilling to completely give up its mobility. Unlike the helicoplacodes, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers, whose bodies still follow some form of symmetry, the homolozoans completely defy all principles of animal body design. Their bodies break all symmetry patterns and are simply a pile of geometric shapes randomly stacked together. Looking at these creatures, which paleontologists have reconstructed, one would never guess that they are actually animals. Faced with such a bizarre-looking creature, we can't even imagine how food and water flow inside their body or how they evolved down such an unusual path. Many science fiction writers nowadays have poor imagination. They exhaust their creativity and come up with alien creatures that cannot escape the categories of vertebrates, arthropods, and mollusks. However, on our planet, there exists a group of animals that can easily exceed the limits of human imagination. Echinoderms. Whether extinct or extant, any one of them can subvert human imagination. Echinoderms are wild and free in their external appearance, but extremely conservative in certain aspects, such as never evolving eyes, nervous systems, or circulatory systems. From their names, we can tell that echinoderms have never left the ocean, let alone fresh water or land. This has cost them a great price in every major extinction event throughout history, causing the echinoderm family to constantly shrink over the past 400 million years. Their strange names like Edrioasteroes, Cyclocystodes, Cystodes, Camptostromates, and Ophiocystodes have become ancient mysteries buried in the rock layers.
However, from another perspective, echinoderms can always survive by relying on their endless creativity. Using their odd species to twist and turn their bizarre bodies, and bloom a variety of oddities on this planet. In my opinion, any group of animals that has gone through the process of evolution, no matter what path they have taken or whether they have succeeded or not, is a magnificent epic that can always make me feel amazed. Only when facing echinoderms, my heart feels no emotion, and I can only think of laughing. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you can subscribe to my channel. I'll share more interesting knowledge about prehistoric creatures. Goodbye.